the month of prayer, fasting, generosity, giving. And in the previous reminders, we were reminded of the importance of prayer. When in this month, is the month of Qiyam, and fasting is the month of Siyam. However, there are many acts of worship that were practiced in this month. And one of them is the Jew, or the generosity of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That we find that he, Ramadan, is even more generous than any times in the year. But before that, we have to understand that even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this month is considered to be the month where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself is generous. For indeed in this month, every night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala feeds slaves with the hellfire. When we pray, He promised to forgive us our sins. When we fast, to forgive our sins as well. Even though we, do, we don't do much, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised us great reward for our deeds. And we look in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we find many verses in the Quran and many statements of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam encouraging us to give more than 50 places only in the Quran and so many in the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. However, when we look at our reality, we find that not many of us give much. And, may, and maybe some of us even think that we are generous. But if we look at the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Sahaba and how they gave, actually we'll find that we haven't given much. We will mention a few verses from the Quran, a few statements of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would serve as a reminder in Allah ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, مَذَلُ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ كَمَثَلِ حَبَّةٍ أَنْبَتَتْ سَبْعَ سَنَابٍ فِي كُلِّ سُنْبُلَةٍ مِئَةُ حَبَّةٍ وَاللَّهُ يُضَاعِفُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءٍ This example that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions, is very important. It shows us the great reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to those who give for his sake. He says the example of those who give their wealth in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like a grain that grows seven ears or seven spikes. In each one of them, there are a hundred grains. Which means that for one thing that we give, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will multiply it 700 times. But not only that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَاللَّهُ يُضَاعِفُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ And Allah multiplies the reward for those whom He wishes. In the dunya, if we were told that if we put a real or one dollar in the bank, that in return we could profit 100%, 100 times more, we will find people rushing to the bank. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling us in the Quran. He will give us 700 times as much. Not only that, He says, Wallahi ضَعِفُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ He may even give us more than that. And this shows that, يعني, many times we don't read and think about the verses that we're reading in the Quran. Another verse in the Quran also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that not only that we benefit from giving, meaning that we get reward in the hereafter, but actually we are benefiting ourselves first. He says, وَمَا تُقَدِّمُوا لِأَنفُسِكُمْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ تَجِدُهُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ هُوَ خَيْرًا وَأَعْظَمْ أَجْرًا He says, وَمَا تُقَدِّمُوا لِأَنفُسِكُمْ That which you give, or that which you put forward for yourselves of good. You will find with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better and greater in reward. Begin of verse says, anfusikum. So when we give charity, when we give, we're not doing some, someone else a favor. As many of us, when we give people, we think that they are in need of us only, and that we are doing them a favor. And we forget that actually we're helping ourselves first and foremost. 
Because that which we give in the dunya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward us in this dunya and the hereafter. There is no loss. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says another verse. وَمَا أَنْفَقْتُمْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ يُوَفَّ إِلَيْكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَضَامُونَ That whatever you spin, that which you spin which is good, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give it back to you in full, fully. And in another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us that the wealth that we have, that we spend, is from Him. It's reminding us that this wealth that you have is not because you are intelligent, or because you deserve it, or because of your education, for example, as many people may think that I deserve this money. Why should I give? I worked hard for this money. But we have to remember that this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There may be people who are more educated, more intelligent than you. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't give them this wealth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَأَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقَنَاكُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَ أَحَدَكُمُ الْمَوْتُ فَيَقُولَ رَبِّي لَوْ لَا أَخَّرْتَنِي إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ قَرِيبٍ فَأَصَّدَّقَ وَأَكُمْ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Spend from that which we have provided you with. From that which we have provided you with. He says, what? Before death comes to one of you. And then what would that person say? He will say, oh my Lord, give me some time. So that I may what? Give charity. And be from those who are righteous. So the people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that some of us will ask, will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he, that he doesn't take their life. Why? Because they want to give charity. So before that time comes, right now, while you are living, give. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you in your wealth. And remember that this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to begin with. This is a form of generosity from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. That he gives us the wealth and he acts and he encourages us to give it back. But not only that, he rewards us, promises us to multiply it. And we look in the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, we also find many statements, traditions of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, And one of them is the statement of the Prophet وسلم, when he says, ما من يوم يصبح فيه العبد إلا وينزل فيه ملكان ويقول أحدهما اللهم أعطي منفقا خلفا ويقول الآخر اللهم أعطي ممسكا تلفا There is no day that servant starts or he begins except that two angels will be sent down The first will make dua for the person who gives اللهم أعطي May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oh Allah, give the person who spins, give him something in return, to replace what he has given. And the other one will make a dua against the person who holds back, who doesn't give, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroys his wealth. So do you want to be from those who the angels, the angels make dua for you when you give? And also another narration, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, مَا نَقَصَ مَالٌ مِنْ صَدَقَةٍ that the wealth, there is no wealth that decreases from giving sadaqah. And this is also one of the problems. When we think of giving, the shaitan comes to us, us and tells us, and you're giving away something. This is going to take away from your wealth. But actually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts barakah, he puts blessings in the wealth that we give. And you'll find that many people who give sadaqah, give charity, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts barakah in their wealth. And others who may have much more, you'll find that they complain about spending all of their money at the beginning of the month, for example, and so forth. In another narration, the Prophet ﷺ, which is amazing, he says, لو أن لي مثل أحد ذهب ما سرني أن يمر بي ثلاثة أيام وعندي منه شيء 
الا شيء لدين اقضيه وكما قال عليه الصلاه والسلام Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this narration, he mentions, he says that if I had some, which, if I had a mountain of gold, which is that which is equivalent, which is equal to a mountain of gold or a mountain of Uhud in gold, then I wouldn't want three days to pass by without me giving all of it away, except for something that I will keep to pay a debt back. In this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ informs us that if he had gold, which was equivalent or equal to the mountain of Uhud, which is a huge mountain, Medina, imagine a room of gold, not even a room, a box of gold if a person had it. How much of that would they give in charity? Prophet is telling us that he had the whole mountain of Uhud, in gold, that he only went three days, three days to go by without him giving everything away. And this again is because the Prophet ﷺ and the righteous people understood the benefit of giving, the benefit of the sadaqah, the dunya, their hearts weren't attached to the dunya, whereas when they give, they think about giving, should I give, I shouldn't. But rather they had trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this we, thought, we find reflected on their actions. And this is why we find the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Where a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the person, the Prophet gave him a herd of sheep between two mountains. And in two mountains there were sheep between them. And he gave it to this person. To the extent that this man, when he saw this, he went back to his people and he said, Ya qawm, aslimu, fa inna muhammadan ya'ti ata'a man la yakhsha al-faqr. He said to his people, O oh my people, become Muslims, accept Islam, for indeed Muhammad gives the giving of a person who does not fear of poverty. He has no fear of poverty. The person who has much wealth, a lot of wealth, they're very rich, when they give, they don't necessarily think. They're not counting every real, every dollar they give. Because they have so much wealth. The Prophet Sallallahu used to give and give. So much, it, it was as if he, was, he, didn't, he wasn't afraid that he would go or he would reach a level where he wouldn't have any wealth left. And Anas, the narrative of the hadith, he says that people would come and their intention of entering Islam was only for the dunya. When they entered Islam, after a short period of time, it would become more beloved to them, the religion of Islam, than the dunya and everything that's on it. So we find this narration of Prophet Muhammad would give and give, even though he himself didn't have much, as we know. He used to eat off of dates and water. Some nights he didn't have any food. But yet he would give and give. And this reflected on the Prophet and his companions as well. Not only the Prophet وسلم, but because the Prophet was an example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him as an example for us to follow. Indeed, there was in the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you a good example. So the Prophet is an example for us. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum. We find the famous story of Abu Bakr and Umar. Where Umar radiallahu anhu, he says, he says, Amarana Rasulullah Amarana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam anna ta saddaqa fawafaqa dharika indi mali. He says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded us to give sadaqa. One day the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded us to give sadaqa. So he said, it happened to be that at that time I had some wealth, yeah, I had some money. So Umar used to always compete with Abu Bakr to do good. And this is the way, the attitude of those who are righteous. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And that, in doing righteous deeds, those who compete should compete. So what did Umar say? He said that if I beat Abu Bakr, surpass him in any day, meaning do more good than him, it will be today. 
Because Umar on that day, he had some wealth. So he said, this day, inshallah, I will beat Abu Bakr. I'm doing good. So Umar went to the Prophet wasallam, and he gave him half of his wealth. Divided his wealth into two halves. And he gave one half in sadaqah, and the second half he left for his family. So when he came to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the Prophet asked him, he gave him half of the wealth, he asked him, what did you leave for your family? He said, I left for them the same amount, mithla dhalik. Then he says, Abu Bakr came, and he gave all of his wealth to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He gave what? All of his wealth to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And the Prophet asked him, what did you leave for your family? He said, I left for them Allah and his messenger. He had trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Umar, when he saw this, he said, La abada. I will not compete with him anymore. Meaning that he saw the virtue of the says of Bakr radiallahu anhu. So they would compete in doing good. And this is an example from the Sahaba radiallahu anhu. Another example also from the woman time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Aisha radiallahu anha was generous as well to the extent that one day she had 10,000 dirhams or 100,000 actually dirhams 100,000 silver coins and she was fasting and someone came and she gave all of that in charity and when she asked her servant a female servant is there anything left or why did you leave anything left so that I can use it to buy something to break my fast with she told her, if you had reminded me, I would have, I would have left something. So Aisha radiallahu anha has fasting, 100,000 dirhams. She gives all of it to sadaqah. To the extent that she doesn't have anything left to break her fast with. She wasn't concerned to save some of it for other than that. But rather her concern was to break her fast. Another narration also from Aisha radiallahu anha. That al munkadir came to her and said, I have a need, I am poverty, I need money. And Aisha and I said, I don't have anything. She said, if I had 10,000 dirhams, I would have given them to you, but I do not have anything. So the narrator says that after some time, someone came to her with 10,000 dirhams. So Aisha took that wealth, or she sent it to that person, which is al munkadir and Munkadir went and he got married and gave birth to three, or his wife gave birth to three children. One of them was Muhammad ibn Munkadir. Muhammad ibn Munkadir, one of these scholars with Tabi'in. So we find that Aisha anha gives, even though she gives the wealth that came to her as soon as it came to her. She was asked for something she didn't have. And as soon as she received this wealth, she gave it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these examples that we mentioned the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are general, in general, generally speaking throughout the year. But in Ramadan, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave even more. If you imagine the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying that if I have a mountain of Uhud or if I had gold which was equal to a amount of Uhud, I would give in it. And the other narrations, what about in Ramadan? The narrator says, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم the hadith, كان أجود الناس وكان أجود ما يكون في رمضان حين يلقاه جبريل وكان يلقاه كل ليلة فيدارس القرآن فلا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أجود بالخير من ريح المرسلة. This narration, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, the narrator tells us that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was جواد, he was generous. And we look at the word generous or jawad, we find that many scholars have mentioned that a person who is jawad is not only a person who is generous, but rather a person who gives those who need without them asking. Meaning that when a person sees that there are people who are in need or sees somewhere that he should spend his wealth, he gives. Some of us maybe will ask or someone suggests something or there is a need, a project, or something, we give. However, the person who is jawad, he gives without being asked. So the narrator says that the Prophet ﷺ was jawad. And he says that he was ajwad mayakun. He was even more generous in the month of Ramadan. When 
when he met with Jibreel and he studied with him the Quran. And he said that Jibreel would study with him the Quran every night. And then he says that the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was more generous than the Riyah al Mursala, the fast wind. Which means that his generosity was unimaginable. You cannot imagine it. This hadith, there are three benefits, or many benefits, but three of them are very important. The first one is that the Prophet was even more generous in Ramadan. And this is in all acts of worship that we find that the Prophet in the month of Ramadan, he did more because it's a blessed time. And also we find in this narration that he says when he recited or he studied the Qur'an with him, he became even more generous. Meaning that there's a connection between reading the Qur'an and the person being generous. And the reason is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we mentioned in many verses of the Qur'an, He encourages us to give and to give. So this narration tells us that when the Prophet sallallahu studied the Qur'an with Jibreel, he became even more generous. And then another benefit from this hadith is that the righteous companions have effect on a person. So the scholars have mentioned that because of Jibreel, he accompanied the Prophet sallallahu he was in good companionship. And then this had an impact in him giving even more as well. So we find that this time of Ramadan had an effect on the Prophet ﷺ being generous. Reading the Quran also because the Quran, in the Quran Allah encourages us to give much. And also being in good companionship also encourages us to give more. So these are some of the verses and some of the narration of the Prophet ﷺ. And there are many. But this is something in brief, hopefully it will be a reminder. However, before ending, we want to mention a few things that are important. One is, the first thing is that we give, we shouldn't destroy or invalidate what we have given by reminding people of that which we have given them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ladina amanu, la tubatilu sadaqatikum bil manni wal adhi. Do not invalidate, do not destroy the sadaqa, the charity that you had given through what? Bil manni. Reminding people of it. I've given you this, I've given you that. The whole reward goes away, khalas. When you give something, you give it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not because of the people, not to show off, as many people do. You find people on social media, for example, we've done this, we just gave this amount of money, I just came from this act of worship. And where is sincerity? There's something between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or remind people of what we have done for them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, لا تبطيلوا, Do not invalidate your sadaqah because of the man. Reminding people of it. And He says, وَالْأَذَى Harming, causing harm to people. Also, we shouldn't give it to show off. As we mentioned in Riyadh, to say that I donated such and such amount of money. But rather this is something that should be between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we shouldn't show off when we give. Rather this is something that should be sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we want the hereafter. And also, especially in Ramadan, it's important that we remember the difference between sadaqah and zakah. Because in Ramadan many people intend to give their sadaqah or their zakah I should say. And some people may even be wait, they have to give zakah maybe two months ago and they wait and say, I'm going to give it in Ramadan. And actually that's not permissible, you cannot delay the sad zakah, which is an obligation to wait for Ramadan. And we have people thinking, well, let me give the zakah. And maybe they give zakah and they think that they have done someone a favor. And they give the poor person or the organization or whatever, some zakah, they think they're doing some person or someone a favor, but actually this the money that you give, it's, an, it's a right upon you. But it's the haqq of the poor people, their right. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَفِي أَمْوَالِهِمْ حَقٌ لِلسَّائِلِ وَالْمَحْرُومِ People who are in need, those who ask for wealth or money, that's their right. That money that you give in zakah is a right. 
that is upon you. It's an obligation that you're fulfilling, meaning you have no option in giving zakah. When you give zakah, you're fulfilling an obligation. You're not doing anything extra. So when we give zakah, I don't think that we're doing something that's doing someone a favor. Rather, if you want to do something good, give charity, sadaqah. Don't wait. And don't think by giving zakah, you're doing someone a favor, as we mentioned. So when we, we think about giving, we should think about giving sadaqah. And don't think that this zakah that we're giving is sadaqah. Don't mix between the two. One is an obligation that we have to give before Ramadan or during Ramadan. If it happens that you have to give zakah during Ramadan, you give it. But if you want to be right, if you want to be generous, like the Prophet ﷺ was, then give the charity from that which is not an obligation, meaning the sadaqah. And also, we should keep in mind when we spend to be conscious of what we are giving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how much we give. Because many of us, we spend money on clothes, on shoes, shirts, suits, pocketbooks, bags, maybe hundreds, restaurants, 300, 400, 500. And when we're asked to give charity, or we think about it, the shaitan comes to us. So some people they give, they may give something, some change that they have. And they think they have done, again, someone a favor. But this is for your own benefit. So, that which we give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it should be more than what we spend, actually. We actually understood the benefit of sadaqah. And in some cases, a person may give things that they don't need. And again, they think they have done, and it's good. But there is a difference between giving something that's precious to you. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ You will not reach the status of al-birr, attain al-birr, righteousness, until you give from that which you love. So some people may have shirts, thobes, shoes, khimars, abayas, whatever it is, that they don't wear, they don't need. They have five pairs of shoes they don't like maybe even. So they'll give them. Because they're not attached to it. It means nothing to them, actually. And then they feel like they have done something great. It's good, alhamdulillah. But actually, the test is when you give something that means much to you. When you give something and you prefer it over your own desires. Not to give something that you don't wear, you don't use. Something you may, you may not have touched in years. Sometimes people have things that they haven't worn or touched in years and they give it. Sadaqah, alhamdulillah, I'm giving some sadaqah. What about things that are precious to you? What about sacrificing some of your wealth, as we mentioned? No one is telling you to give half of it, but why not give a good portion of what you have? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with. Because this is what benefits you on Yom Al-Qiyam. Students who are studying, families have been destroyed, they don't have wealth. People don't have the basic needs. And we have people collecting money and collecting money. For what? On Yom Al-Qiyamah, it will not benefit you. Once you leave this dunya, your wealth that you left behind will not benefit you unless you spent it in something that's beneficial. Or sadaqah jari, an ongoing sadaqah. So these are the things that we should spend on now, while we're living. Because once you leave the dunya, those who inherit from you, they will be in control. It's not your wealth anymore. Are they going to spend for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the intention of doing sadaqah for you? Allahu a'lam. But right now you have the wealth, you want to control, you can give to benefit yourself in the hereafter. Right now, don't wait and say tomorrow. As we mentioned the verse, people will say, we wish we can give. So right now, give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the month of al-jood wal-karam, generosity, Ramadan. Give and spin for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And know that which, that which you give actually, in reality, you are actually saving that for the hereafter. When you give a real, in our mind we say that I'm giving, let's say a thousand reals, that's being deducted from my wealth. It's going away. But actually, that's what you are saving, actually. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ, the narration 
a sheep or something was given to the Prophet And when he came home, it was given in sadaqah. So he asked his family, what, was re- what has remained? Well, what's, what's the remain? What part is, has remained from this sheep? And they told him only the shoulder, the ketib. That's the only thing that's remained. So he said, sallallahu alayhi wa he said, actually all of it has is remained or has been remained except for the shoulder. Meaning that that which was given in sadaqah, is that going, that's what's really going to stay with us. What we give in sadaqah will stay for us in the hereafter. And that's what matters. As for what we leave in the dunya, which we don't give, if we don't spend in something that's righteous, in something that's beneficial, there is no great benefit from it, actually. So when we give, remember that what you are giving is actually what you are saving for yourself in the hereafter. And that should encourage you to give more bi ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase us in righteousness, and to make us of those who are generous and who give for His sake. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.